Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth. I go by the username Be More Creative, both here on FlossTube and on Instagram. So today I'm just going to show you very quickly, and this is going to be a little, probably an insert clip into my FlossTube channel to be honest. It's not really a tutorial, but I'm going to show you how I am going to be using the cross stitch pattern from the Caterpillar Cross Stitch subscription box this month and I'm going to be stitching it onto this banner. So this banner was one I bought from Amazon. Um, it did come completely plain, it was just a plain canvas and what I've done is I've just watercolour painted this. Now I wasn't going to do a video which is why I hadn't filmed this part, I'm sorry, but all I did was I soaked this, um, completely soaked it, just put it in the sink full of water to let it up some water and then I just took my watercolour paints, I watercoloured the blue onto it with blue, green, there's a little bit of purple in here to kind of make like a bluey ocean type thing. I then let it completely dry and then with some metallic watercolour paint and just the dark blue that I've used here, when it was completely dry I've just splattered that on so I've got the splatter effect. Um, I actually just took a green highlighter as a zebra highlighter and I've colored in the wooden stick um, and then I've just put a piece of macrame cord in a blue color it did come with this white cord but I didn't really want that it's just a piece of string so I've just taken some macrame cord and I've just attached that so that is going to be the base of my piece um, but what I did want to show you is how I'm actually going to stitch on this because this if I hold it up, it's just a piece of like canvas. It's not a cross stitch fabric at all. So there's no holes, nothing like that. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to pre prepare this. I'm going to stitch it off camera, um, but how I'm going to prepare it, and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to remove so I just have the stitching piece on here. So, thought I'd add a little bit of an unboxing. This is the Caterpillar cross stitch subscription box. Um, this was the one that has just recently come out. Um, so I have just recently subscribed back to these kits because I got them at the start. I wasn't, um, I loved having them, but I just wasn't stitching the pieces. But I've decided I'm wanted to go back. I love the Caterpillar Cross Stitch um, team. I love the boxes. They're so much fun. This is £25 every two months. I chose to do it um, to pay the monthly, but if you sign up for a whole year, you get a discount. I've just gone monthly on mine. So you get your little woohoo Caterpillar Cross Stitch card and it will tell you all of the details of where you can find the team, the hashtags, things like that. Um, the next thing we have in here is there is an embroidery hoop. So this pattern, um, I'll show you the picture of the pattern in a minute, but they finished it in an embroidery hoop, which is a really fun way of doing it. But I'm just going to make sure with each of these kits, I'm challenging myself, which is why I'm going to show you on the banner today. You also get a, so that is your, in the box you get your pattern. This is your cross stitching tool, so it's different um, on regular occasions. So we've got a six inch... Um, LB's embroidery hoop so it's a really nice hoop you could use this to stitch in and also to finish I'm not a hoop person so I'll find another use for that you get your sweet treat so we have the milk chocolate sea themed um, chocolate lolly I love how everything in the box is themed this month we got a nutmeg and arlo um, washi tape so I have already opened this kit because I wanted to see when it arrived, how it looked, but let me just... Sorry, trying to get into this. So you have this gorgeous washi tape, which if you wanted, you could put around the edge of your stitching while stitching it. You can finish it. I'll be trying to incorporate this in my finish. I'm not sure how yet, but it is absolutely stunning. But washi tape is always just so useful on so many different things. And then the last thing we have in this box, try not to get the crinkle paper everywhere, is we have our actual kit. So this month it is a Sea Life themed kit. And in here it does come with, I'm just going to move this off camera because I don't want to show the pattern. So you've got a coloured pattern as you can see there. So I'm just going to remove that so we don't give the pattern away. We have a little bookmark 
which has the information on the designer. So this was designed by Sally Payne. She's a freelance illustrator and surface pattern designer working in Cheshire, UK. Um, and it says about the piece. It also um, says about the piece that she's actually designed. So this is the piece. This is her design. You can see it in the photo there. And that is what I'm going to be stitching on my banner. I love the cards that you get. So these are really useful to floss storage. And um, what I will be doing is I will be taking the numbers, the DMC numbers and the pattern symbol. And I will write that onto the card next to the number. We have a piece of Ada. I'm not sure if this is 16 count or 14 count. I have to have a look. And then there's some information um, on here. You also do get a needle. So you've got pretty much everything. All you need to do is grab a pair of scissors and start stitching. But what I'm going to show you today is how I am going to use this Ada, but I'm not going to keep the Ada after. So what I'm going to do, let me just move everything out the way. So I'm actually going to pin my Ada, so I've grabbed some pins. I'm going to pin it in place on top of my canvas here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and line this up so it is fairly centred because I do want that to be in the centre of my piece, which I think there is about correct. And I am just going to pop some pins in place just so we can hold it in place while I'm stitching. And you can use any types of pins, these are just the ones that I have, doesn't matter what you use. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to cross stitch on this as I normally would. So I'm going to go away and cross stitch this pattern and I will come back when the pattern is finished and show you what I'm planning to do. So all I've done is I've pinned this so it is pretty central onto my piece. I've pinned it directly to the front. And as I said, I am just going to start cross stitching my pattern over the ADOs you would normally, but when you go through, you are going to be going through the canvas as well. So it's going to be a little bit more work to stitch it, but it is possible to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will be back. Um, for you, it will just be a couple of moments. For me, it will be um, a little bit of time just why I stitched this piece. Hey, so I'm back. It's been two days. The first video I filmed was on Wednesday. We're now Friday um, afternoon. And I have finished stitching the Ocean Wonder kit by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. As I showed you in the first little clip, you would have seen me setting this up. I've stitched this onto a banner canvas that I have painted with watercolours. Um, the back, as you can see the stitching, I'm not too fussed about because I'm not it's going to be hanging against the wall, no one's going to see this, but you could also put a piece of felt behind it if you want to, I'm just not that fussed about it. So, with the stitching, a couple of things that I found, um, some tips and tricks. I did originally start with the embroidery needle, which was working, it was a, sorry, it was a little bit difficult. Um, so I went to a normal sewing needle, but the problem was I kept hitting my finger um, and but it was easier to stitch. So up to you, you can do it with an embroidery needle. I was using the one in the kit, which was working. It was just a little bit difficult to get through my canvas because it is a very thick canvas, um, but it would have worked. I went to a sewing needle, just be aware. I ended up having to put a plaster on because I kept hitting my finger because obviously when you come up, you're trying to aim for the holes as much as possible. The other thing I found with most of these projects is you do have to make sure you pull your threads quite tight um, because when you take this Ada away, which is what we're going to do now, um, you don't want your stitches coming loose from if you've got loose stitches. So I am just going to show you now how I remove the cross stitch Ada from this. Um, all I'm going to do is this is the same method if you are using um, waste 
canvas I think it's called where you can stitch onto something that doesn't have it. I just use any Ada, this was the Ada that came in the kit because I find it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut around my piece. Now you could um, just cut roughly. I'm just going to cut roughly because if I have less strands to pull out I find it easier on me because then I can also use this piece of Ada for something else if I'm doing like a little card or something so I just find it a little bit easier and a little bit less waste because there is always something you can do with a little piece of scrap so you're just being careful just to cut the Ada on here and not cut anything else Now that's cut, so I'm just going to pull that to one side. And now all I'm going to start doing is how you would fray your piece is, I'm just actually just going to cut that bit off so it's a bit easier. I'm just going to start pulling at the edges. The same way that you would fray your cross stitch piece, I'm just going to pull it. And you'll see that the strands will come off. I'm not sure if I'm actually in frame for this. So all I'm going to do is just keep pulling up, just being careful. And I have just trimmed my nails. It's a bit more difficult, but you could use tweezers if you wanted to. And I'm just going to keep pulling at the strands. And as you can see, it's the same as if you wanted to fray the edges, but we're just going to work around. This does take a little bit of time to remove all of these and when you get to a part that's stitched just be careful not to pull that too hard because you don't want to pull your stitches so I'm just going to take the strands individually here there you go and I'm going to move on to the next one and the same thing I'm just going to pull those up I have a little bucket to the side of me just so I can catch all these stray threads because there will be a lot of them. And I'm just going to keep working through the project the same way. So when you get to a piece that's got a strand, just do it one strand at a time and just pull it through. There you go. So all you're doing is just pulling out your loose threads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and do this because I actually tend to just put a film on or a TV program and I just pull my threads free. And as you can hopefully see here that the X's will stay onto the fabric because you've gone through those but the rest of it will just start to pull away. So I'm going to go and do that and then I will be right back. So there we go, but it was a really relaxing process. Now, one thing I have noted is I wanted to keep some of the scraps. So as you saw before, I cut around, whereas that is why it took so long, because if you leave it in a square, it is so easy to just grab a thread and pull it off. Like it is super easy to do. But where I cut it in a round, I didn't have any even edges. But I just sat in front of a film and just got it unpicked. So it was really easy to do. It was just a bit fiddly because I had to take my scissors and cut around each animal roughly and then pull the threads out when it got a little bit closer because it was a lot more difficult to do. Whereas when I've done it in the past and if you don't want to keep the scraps of fabric, you could just pull them off. But I want to see how far I can actually make this kit go. Um, so I'm gonna keep the scraps of fabric. I've got the leftover threads and I think I could probably stitch up a couple of complementary pieces to go with this, um, which is why I cut off the scraps. Normally I wouldn't bother with this little tiny bit of scrap, but because I wanna see how far I can get this kit to go, that is why I did decide to do that. But it is a little bit more time consuming and a little bit fiddly. Um, but yes, the last thing I've got to do is the the stick that came with it, as you can see, I coloured just using a 
mild liner, um, just a green mild liner. I've covered the stick and I didn't. I tested it in the middle first, which is why you've got this patch here, and then I've just left this part blank because you're never actually going to see that part. So I'm just going to stick this right through, and then I have already made my macrame thread cord. Um, I've just done it so I can slide it on and off. I'm not going to attach that because when it is up, that will hang quite nicely. So that is the piece. Sorry, just removing some of those threads. And then now I can just add on my needle minders, which I don't seem to have any to hand. You just grab a couple. And there we go. So we've got a little cute banner that we can hang up just as a decorative piece. Or what I'm going to use mine for is I am going to be attaching my caterpillar cross stitch. I've just got two out. I have got more um, needle minders for display purposes so I can have this hanging up and it will be a really cute place to put my caterpillar cross stitch needle minders on. So I am going to see what else I can create and I will put that up on the Facebook group also on my Instagram um, so that will be on the caterpillar cross stitch Facebook group I will put up a photo after I've stitched some extra pieces and I will put it a photo of everything together to see how far I can stretch this kit using just what came with the kit. So really looking forward to that and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you'd love to see more ideas with Caterpillar cross stitch boxes or with other projects, then please let me know down in the comment section below. I'm hoping the next box gets in before I go on holiday. Um, but we will, we will see. I absolutely love this project and I cannot wait to do more. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.